And I'm going to keep doing it, preaching and teaching what I can read. Once again, this is Minister Kev of the body of Christ. Grace be unto you. Peace and blessings from God the Father and from his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And what y'all can see right there up there on the screen, those are the very text messages that I sent to Tom on a so-called nationwide Spain the main worldwide broadcast. But you were picking and choosing the ones that you wanted to read. Then when you talked about me crazy, the last one I wrote to you was God bless you because I'm supposed to bless those that curse me. Amen. And another one is this. Even when I said amen, see, Tom, I know there's only one name for God, the father, for the son of God and the Holy Ghost. And that name is Jesus. So let me let me tell you this, Tom. Most people who know and have the knowledge of who the son of God is, we know that he's God. Why? Because it's written in the scripture. You try to duck and dodge Hebrews 1. That's why enough talk. We're going to go there. Hebrews 1 and at 8 says this. But unto the son, he's safe. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Right there, the father calls his son God. Let's keep reading. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God. Even thy God. There you go. Once again, God the Father, calling his son God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, always calling him Lord, and he's calling him God, just like Thomas, what he say. And that's exactly what I believe. I already told you that on the phone. You asked me one time, uh, er early in the t some of the uh, first times I ever called you, you asked me, who is Jesus Christ? And I said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. You got a little quiet. And then I believe you said, is that it? I said, no, he's my Lord. He's my God, but he's the Christ, the son of God. Everything written in the scriptures about Jesus Christ is exactly who he is. Why don't you remember and tell that? Maybe it's because you got so many people calling you. I don't know. But that's what I told you, Tom. And if you don't know, now you know. But you can go back and check some of my other videos because this is what I talk about. The apostles doctrine. But they preach the father and the son. But let's keep reading. I'm in verse nine. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Oh, excuse me. In verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Wow, you mean Jesus Christ in the beginning laid, has laid the foundation of the earth? That's right, because God created all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what the scriptures teach us. Amen. Over there in uh, Ephesians. Hope you have the King James Version of the Bible. Now, turn your Bible to Ephesians. Ephesians, I think we want around us. Uh, let's go Ephesians. Three and nine and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. That's right. And Jesus Christ has a father, according to the scripture. Amen. Jesus Christ has a God, according to the scripture. And I just read in Hebrews, the first chapter. Also, since we're in Ephesians, a beautiful book. Let's go Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. You mean Jesus Christ has a head? That's right. It's God the Father. As explained over there in um, 1 Corinthians. I believe it's the 11th chapter. Amen. But let's go there. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And let me read. 1 Corinthians 11, 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. That's right. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has a head. Amen. So what's the big deal, Tom? Why are you ducking and dodging Hebrews, the first 
chapter. Amen. You know, so what do I believe? I believe exactly what the scriptures say and what the scriptures teach us. And I notice you have somebody calling up the show and they always want to say, and, oh, my goodness, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But you don't finish it. So we're going to go ahead and finish it. Let's look in Philippians, the second chapter. And let me go ahead and for time's sake, let me start at nine. Wherefore, God also have highly exalted him. God, the father exalted his son. And given him a name which is above every name. Now, let me stop right there. That name is Jesus. Do you think God the Father would give his son a name higher than his? No, he gave him the same name. God the Father and the Son of God have the same name. Don't get me mixed up with others. I preach Jesus. And given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So why you always stop? Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You stop right there. There's more to it. It says to the glory of God the Father. That's because that Jesus Christ is Lord. As you know, in the, once again, in the book of Ephesians, there's one Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. But it says to the glory of God the Father. When you see the name Jesus Christ, let me tell you something, man. Jesus Christ is not the name of the Father. The name of the Father is Jesus. That's the name that was given over there in the beginnings of the Gospels uh, by the angel Gabriel. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. That's the Father's name. That's the Son of God's name. And that's the name of the Holy Ghost. Because the Spirit of Jesus Christ is the Holy Ghost. See, you say and you err because you're saying that Jesus Christ is the Holy Ghost. Are you saying that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Holy Ghost? That doesn't make any sense. There's a difference between body and and spirit or flesh and spirit, you see. So that's where you're erring because Jesus Christ, that's a name specifically for the Son of God. Jesus Christ. What does Christ mean? It means anointed. And he was anointed by his Father. So you got to get it right and understand the chain of command more accurately and correctly. So this young man got to do it. And I got to tell you. And I got to show you. So let's go to Ephesians again. Uh, 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 and cover a few more of these things. Ephesians 4, 4. Let's, let's, let's go there. There's one body and one spirit. Of course, there's only one church. At the same time, when you're dealing with God, there's only one body. There's not three bodies. There's not three persons. There's one person, and that's in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So don't get me confused. It says there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Now get this. It says one Lord. That's lowercase. O-R-D. L-R-D. One Lord. That's talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. One faith. That one faith has to be in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the only way you're going to get to the Father who is a spirit and one baptism. That baptism represents the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. So verse five, all, all three of those uh, subjects, if you will, uh, one Lord, one faith, all, all that has to do with, with Jesus Christ, the son of God. Look at verse six, because people like to stop. It says one God and father of all who is above all. Well, if he's the head of the son, then he's above the son. You see, God, the father is higher than him. That's what Jesus Christ in Self said, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. How is he in us? By way of the Holy Ghost or the spirit of Christ. So Tommy, understand who you're talking to before you talk. Amen. The scriptures are, are also clear. Amen. Let's go to another scripture since I'm here real quick. And even for the sake of time, uh, Colossians 2. In nine, we're still talking about the son of God and what was in him. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Right. Two and nine for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in his body dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But it's not saying that he is the Godhead. But what was in him 
was all of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. That's why I got water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we're complete in him. When you say Jesus Christ, you say it all. Because you have that, that name that was given, Jesus, with the title anointed, applied, letting us know that that's the one who died. It was the Son of God. Because we've all been baptized unto Jesus Christ. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So Tommy, well, let me keep, let's, for the sake of time, skip down here to verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. That's why I got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That represents the Son of God. Wherein also ye are risen. He resurrected. We walk in the newness of life with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. God the Father raised his son from the dead. Amen. Stop trying to tell people or depict me as somebody who believes in the Trinity. That's not in the Bible. That's false. Created by the Catholic Church. Created by false Christianity. Don't go there. I got a whole playlist that I come against the Catholic Church and what they started by way of the Council of Nicaea. I'm not going to get into the history. You can do that on your own because you need to. You need to study yourself. Amen. Nevertheless, I got to cut it short. I'll probably come back with a part two. Be blessed.